Thank you, Mr. Deputy President. The issue we have in Australia is a matter of uh, Senator revenue. Senator Milne, could you actually formally move the motion for okay. me? Uh, yes, thank you, um, thank you, Mr. Deputy President. I move the motion. Uh, do I need to read that? It out? That's, okay. that's I move the enough. motion, and in so doing, point out that Australia has a revenue problem. It is not a budget emergency. It is a revenue problem, and the biggest contributor to the revenue problem is the failure of corporations in Australia and multinational corporations to pay an appropriate amount of tax. The Treasury Secretary, Mr Parkinson, at a speech just in the last few days hit the nail on the head. He strongly put out there to Australian business that there had been a complete and utter lack of leadership on taxation reform from business. And what he said was that the ethos of, quote, take from the citizenry at large and give it to us. Take from the citizenry at large and give it to us. And that is very much exactly what we see from multinational corporations operating in Australia and big business in Australia. And frankly, the Abbott government facilitates big business in going about this ethos of take from the citizenry at large and give it to us. And the classic case we have seen, this lack of leadership on corporate tax, was of course with the Abbott government deciding to abolish the carbon price, which is a case of take from the citizenry and give it back to us, the big polluters in Australia, but also the mining tax, take from the citizenry and give it back from us. Get rid of the mining tax, but take out of the pockets of the citizenry all of those measures that the mining tax was to fund that, of course, have been kept. In fact, it is Prime Minister Abbott's choice, Mr Deputy President, choice to spend more than $5 billion in the next two years. $5 billion, a matter of choice, partly to support the war in Iraq, partly to support the, the war in Iraq and partly to facilitate the deal that the Prime Minister's office has done with Mr Palmer from the Palmer United Party in abolishing the mining tax. And so don't come in here and tell us that there is a, a problem caused uh, by anyone other than the big end of town saying, take from the citizenry at large and give it to us. Now, tax evasion absolutely comes into this. There's one thing, tax minimisation, in terms of the loopholes, and then there is outright tax evasion. So let me just start, first of all. Globally, everybody knows that multinational corporations are essentially just moving uh, their taxable income around the world so as to avoid paying tax. And we've seen it in absolutely blatant terms from companies like uh, Google, for example, uh, we've seen it with Apple, we've seen it absolutely, in fact, billions of dollars not being paid tax uh, on because they've been able to move it around the world. The G20 was supposed to deal with this, and at the G20 there was an agreement that exchange of information automatically between G20 countries uh, would occur by 2017. But what did Australia do? Australia pushed for having uh, us be subject to completing the necessary legislative procedures by 2018 to push it out a year. Why did we do that in Australia? Why weren't we one of the early movers? It's no use the Treasurer standing up talking about tax evasion, then getting himself along to the G20 and pushing out Australia's obligation and, but for another year to give business another year. And when asked, why have you pushed it out? Why can't Australia be one of the early movers? It was because big business in Australia wasn't prepared to agree to it and get ready in the time frame. So that is exactly what we're going on. So what do we need to do? Well, first of all, we need to require large corporations to provide more public disclosure and transparency. That is the first thing, because nobody is aware of the extent to which they are hiding their capacity to pay tax or where they're, where they're hiding their money or, in fact, how they are minimising their tax. 
We need to increase the fines for tax evasion and extend laws to effectively cover the full range of corporate tax avoidance strategies. We need to eliminate or restrict the use of stapled securities for tax arbitrage according to the global norms, and we need to ensure that the Australian Tax Office is adequately funded and staffed. And here again we have a Treasurer standing up saying that he wants to make a focus on tax evasion and then sacks from the Tax Office the very people who might actually be able to do the work. And where do they go? They go and get picked up by KPMG, by PricewaterhouseCooper, by Ernst & Young, by Deloitte. And what do they do over there? They advise their corporate clients how to minimise and avoid tax. You cannot tell me that a government that was serious about cracking down on tax evasion and tax minimisation and ending the loopholes would sack the very people in the tax office whose job it is to do that work and see them go across to those corporations who are making a fortune out of assisting those very same companies in avoiding their tax obligations. And you would also, if you are serious about this, you would also have been leading the G20 to adopt tough and effective global rules to combat corporate tax dodging. But instead of that, we've just had that huge dump of information about what's been going on in Luxembourg, for example, with corporations from around the world putting their money into those uh, procedures overseen in Luxembourg, and now we're expected to believe uh, that these companies are in any way serious. Uh, there have been many stories written lately as to, way, as to ways in which this could be done, but I've got in the Senate here a publish what you pay piece of legislation. And I'm glad to say that in the uh, House of Commons a delegated committee has just passed this legislation in the House of Commons, and I would like to get support for it here in Australia. And that is a legally binding requirement for large companies involved in natural resource extraction to provide in their annual reports details of the payments they have made to governments across the world on a project-by-project -project basis. Because we need to know what deals have been done with these governments and how they have been paid off. Because we know that when that money goes into those, uh, those poorer countries, uh, it goes into the pockets of the officials to give them especially good rates on everything and to avoid the re responsibilities they should have. And for example, in the absence of strong democratic institutions and strong governance, the people of those countries are unable to hold corrupt officials uh, to account. And those officials siphon off the money, and we're going to see exactly that when the Australian government pays Cambodia. Ministers in the Hun Sen government will have that in their back pockets. There's no way it will go to help refugees on the ground there. But the first thing that you could do, a really obvious uh, fix for tax dodging, uh, in terms of requiring uh, it should be mandatory that all foreign subsidiaries are disclosed in financial statements. Uh, the Tax Justice Network, for example, noted in 2013 BHP had 462 subsidiaries in 49 countries. Tax payments were disclosed in 12 countries, but not in the other 37 countries with 128 subsidiaries. Rio Tinto had 926 subsidiaries in 71 countries, and tax payments were disclosed in 28 countries, but not in the other 43 countries with 111 subsidiaries. So why wouldn't you require these corporations based here to, be a to actually nominate their subsidiaries so you can see where they are transferring their taxable income in order to avoid tax? We're also told that there's going to be a crackdown on tax havens, but we have yet to see that. And of course, we saw uh, at last year's uh, federal election uh, in, the, at the, in the caretaker period when the tax office chose not to challenge the court ruling on 880 million being paid the rebate from the tax office uh, to Rupert Murdoch's corporations. To this day, I have not been able to find out who authorised the tax office to decide not to challenge that in court. Why should the Rupert Murdoch's companies be able to get away with what they have managed to get away with, and that's all money coming out of the budget? 
If we want to fix things in Australia, we need to raise revenue, and that means a serious effort to crack down on tax evasion, not take it out of the pockets of the poor and the sick and the unemployed. The big end of town is taking from the citizenry, and they intend to keep on doing it, and we will stand up against Orders. it.